Hello, welcome to a video for 2011's Wave 3, Conrad Duke Hauser. Although the Duke that we'll be taking a look at is from Wave 3, and he actually comes with one of the posters all folded up that only shows the figures from Wave 1 and Wave 2 of Pursuit of Cobra, and I think it's because they were still unsure of how far they planned to go with Pursuit of Cobra and what direction to take it in. And then if we also look at the back, there's the same portrait artwork that has the Cobra Fury, and then it has Beachhead and Firefly. And then Beachhead is sending in transmission that says, Exercise extreme caution. There are Cobra Fury tanks rolling down the narrowest alleys. Take care of those Alley Viper officers and don't worry about Firefly. I'm going to track him down myself in transmission. And this is for the pursuit of Cobra City Strike, although Duke is actually from the desert battle of pursuing Cobra. So then we'll take a closer look at the packaging that Conrad Duke Hauser, the team commander, comes in. We have the G.I. Joe logo that's been updated for the unit. Then we have G.I. Joe across the top here that's been updated for Pursuit of Cobra. Then we have your new TV network, HubWorld.com. Now HubWorld.com is one place you can go to, to see the G.I. Joe Renegades cartoon for as long as they're playing it. I haven't checked yet, but I think episode 22 is going to be the next one that they'll put up and then I think episode 23 and then I think that's the last episode that we know that we're going to see until possibly after the G.I. Joe movie comes out next year or next summer so then we also have this portrait right here of Duke and I did want to bring in some other information later that looking at that Duke right there, I saw somebody mention, doesn't this look like somebody very realistic? And actually, yes, when I saw this portrait, it made me think of something that I'll share later. And it also made me think of a figure that I'll share later. And then some other thoughts of what people thought this figure really should have been. But before we get on to that, there is this nice large package bubble that they've done for all the figures and it's kinda good because you can see he comes with quite a few large accessories it talks about the, these are pulse cannons but you'll actually see that they're kinda possibly missile launchers as well and then he has a backpack and then there's another kinda rocket launcher down here although it doesn't fire a missile and then he has the stand behind him and then that's where you're gonna find the poster that's all folded up too and then taking a look at the back of the box. Now if we look at the back of the box you can see that it says number 1102 Conrad Duke Hauser. Now the 11 has been mentioned it could stand for 2011 and 2 could stand for a Duke being the second figure in the wave. Now the Conrad Duke Hauser makes me wonder if they lost the codename to Duke or if they're putting the whole name so that that way if someone's picking up this figure that only knows the history of Rise of Cobra the movie that they would know that this is still the same Duke. Then it says visit GIJo.com. At the time that these figures first came out, it had been updated for Pursuit of Cobra. Haven't gone there yet after, you know, the first couple of figures, but I'm wondering if they're maybe going to update it when the Pursuit of Cobra line comes to an end, close to the end of the year. Now it says G.I. Joe is the code name for a special operations unit of highly trained men and women. Their purpose is to defend the world against Cobra, a ruthless organization with criminal tentacles in every nation on Earth. Now we have a diorama here, but normally they'll put just straight pictures of the figures or characters from the line, or they'll do artwork, but this time they went for a diorama. It still has the same diorama that the Waves 1 and 2 figures had and it kind of shows you what figures are going to come out had you know this been one of the first figures that had come out now it also says that the mission is the pursuit of Cobra Desert Battle G.I. Joe fights back as Cobra unleashes its new weapon the Cobra Hiss tank then we have an ID badge or clearance badge for Duke that says Number 1102, Conrad Duke Hauser, name Conrad S. Hauser, 
serial number 234-55-G189, grade E-8, Master Sergeant, Mission Equipment, D-PLAS, DP-SM, which stands for Shoulder Mounted Dual Plasma Cannon. And then it says, Conrad Duke Hauser commands the G.I. Joe team. He wears impact absorbent battle armor to protect him as he pushes deep into the Cobra territory during the desert battle. He keeps moving closer until he's right on top of the deadly Cobra Hiss tanks. Then he blasts them with his plasma cannon. Now, I'm not sure how you feel about this, but I do feel like Duke should have been one of those figures that came with instructions the same way I felt that Snowdrop should have came with instructions showing what you could do with his accessories. Because not all of his accessories are shown what they can really do when you combine them. So with Duke, before we get into how you can accessorize him or how maybe you should accessorize him, he does come with a stance. So it will help him stand up once you get him all equipped. It says Conrad Duke Hauser, G.I. Joe logo, and two pegs for his feet to plug into. And then we have what we're assuming is the dual cannon, or at least one of the dual shoulder mounted cannons. Now we also have these here that could be missiles or rockets, but you can take each one out, or all four out, and it leaves holes which I could still see is something that shoots plasma rays. And then you take the cable and plug one end into the back of the cannon. And then you can plug the other end into the backpack here. But even before you do that, you can customize the backpack quite a few different ways too. You have these here that plug in as long as you have the holes facing out they can plug in possibly down or they can plug on the other side up but let's say you don't even want to do that you can take this kind of laser rifle you know even though it has small barrels I kind of see that maybe it's like a taser and each one shoots out you know a blast and then it combines and then it gets a bigger blast and you can plug that into the back because there is a peg on the back right there and you just plug that there or you can take this kind of missile launcher here even though it doesn't fire a missile And you can plug that also because of a peg that's in the back there. But you can do the same thing with the post, depending on how you put them on the backpack. Yes, it will make them possibly shoot upside down. right there or maybe it's just for storage and you can plug it in Duke's back But even his backpack could be, depending on how you want to see it, put on different ways too. Because most of the time it's put on this way. But it also has kind of this back support, or maybe that's for his head. You know, it's like that. But we're going to assume that you're only supposed to put it with these posts up on the top. And you kind of have to shove it in there or push it all the way in. 
and then you take these and I'm going to assume that they're supposed to be pointed up because it kind of gets them more above his shoulders So like that, and plug the other ends on the back. And then kind of straighten them out, and then you can say that he's got these areas underneath that are where he controls them. Continuing with storage, I went ahead and rearranged his plasma cannons so that the curved part is now on the bottom, but you just have to switch the cannons to different sides and then put the pegs facing down instead of facing up. But I think that way he looks like he's controlling them with the barrels underneath the gun or there's the square ones right there that he could be holding on to or maybe it has an auto targeting system so all he has to do is look in the direction or move his body in the direction and it fires but more storage that you can do with him if you choose to is you can take his missile launcher here and it takes a little bit of work but there is a peg that you can plug into his back maybe like that or maybe more like the jungle viper and put it like that and then there's also the one on the gun or a laser rifle so like that or like that or the other way but we can do even more storage with the missile launcher here and you can say that while he's firing it maybe it is supposed to face forward so you take the peg and put it in to the hole on the missile launcher just want to be careful not to bend the barrel on the laser rifle so have it underneath that peg or start it out like that and then move it up or again maybe it's just for storage so it goes upside down and gets pegged the other way so like that and then he's got the handle there so then he can carry it when he's not using it now if you take a look at his dual shoulder mounted plasma cannons there are these insignias there. I don't know if they're supposed to be little stars or what but I kinda look at this as every time he shoots something down whether it's a plane or a his tank or another thing that I saw you know when I first saw this I was thinking maybe that's why he has that armor but they talk about it on the back for going up against those his tanks but here we have kind of a metallic silver paint wash over the blue Normally they do a black wash, but I think they've done the silver to give it more of that worn metallic look to it. And they've also gone on and used that same paint application on the figure. Depending on which figure you get, you will have more silver paint wash than other ones. But you can see he's got it on his chest armor there. He's got these armored knee pads quite a bit of different wrinkles within his pants and his shirt got that look on his face kinda looks like he wants to punch the camera <laughs> then we'll take a look at the back got some pockets and some pouches